Let's get into it now with Bronwyn Bishop, the former Speaker of the House, Sky News contributor, Matt Canavan, National Senator, and the Deputy Lord Mayor of Melbourne, our dear friend Nicholas Rees, in the beautiful city of Melbourne. One and all, hello. So, Matt, I was paying attention to what was happening in the Senate today, and uh, while not a lot was happening in the Senate today, you gave a ripper because what you were debating in the Senate today was tax deductibility for the yes case, not the no case, but the yes case, that if you donate to it, it's tax deductible. Roll part of what Matt had to say today. But this bill provides tax deductible status to a group called Australians for Indigenous Constitutional Recognition, who are Australians for Indigenous Constitutional Recognition. Well, in a media release released last week, it says uh, Australians for Indigenous Constitutional Recognition is a key fundraising and organising vehicle in the campaign for a constitutional recognition through a voice to Parliament. So, effectively, this bill provides tax deductible status for the group campaigning for the yes side of the voice debate. So, Matt, help us out here. Was this about tax deductibility for both sides or just one side that you debated today? Yeah, just one side uh, here, Paul. The fix is in on this debate. Uh, it's our first day back at school, uh, so to speak, here in the Senate. First proper day of work. Yesterday we had condolences for Jim Mullen. Today we're into legislation. The government had just two bills uh, in the Senate today. One was that one that you just heard from that was giving uh, a sop to the yes side of the voice debate. Uh, and the other one is to give some grants to universities. So nothing on cost of living relief, nothing about interest rates, uh, nothing about inadequate health services in regional areas, nothing about surging crime in Alice Springs. Uh, the government is already empty uh, just six months into its term. And yes, just on this particular issue, it's an absolute outrage here uh, that one side of this debate to change our constitution is getting a special deal. Uh, the level playing, the playing field is being tilted in favour of the yes debate. And as I said in that speech, uh, my rule of thumb, Paul, is that if a politician really, really wants something and they're trying to uh, push all the levers to get something that they really want, you know, you can, even if you don't know what it is, you, you can probably bet your bottom dollar it's not going to be good for you. So if you don't know what the voice is yet and all you know about it is that politicians really like it and want it, probably you should vote no. Nick, why is that necessary to give tax deductibility to only one half of the argument? I repeat, 65% of people apparently want yes, despite the fact that only 30% apparently have any serious knowledge of it. Um, why, do, why does the debate need to be fiddled with like that? Well, look, I suspect that uh, Senator, Senator Canavan is presenting a bit of a one-sided view on this. Uh, I suspect that... It was that a one-sided bill. bill! Read the bill. A, Read the bill. If a charitable body want to go and campaign for the no case and could establish itself as a charitable purpose, then it would qualify for tax deductibility as well. Now, well, to date, the uh, maybe that? we've only seen bodies <laughs> from the yes side <laughs> of the case coming forward and applying, and we haven't seen bodies from the no side. I, I haven't heard Senator Canavan tell us that he has seen examples of that, so maybe it's just a fact they haven't got off their backside and uh, put in the forms to apply for that tax deductibility But, but Nick, status. don't give me that. I mean, if the government... The government's done this, and they knew that. This was an announcement in the budget, by the way. This is today. It's just the legislation coming through, and we've been raising this for months. Uh, if the government was fair dinkum here about giving a fair go to both sides, they would be making sure that this was the case. They'd be reaching out to the no side to see what they could do there. But, of course, they are not doing that. They're not publishing pamphlets here. They're making sure that they starve the no debate of any resources or attention. They're being supported by their mates in, the, in big tech, in Facebook uh, and Instagram, to do the same. Uh, and as I say, this is not a fair go right now. And Australians don't like well, uh, people who don't want to give people a fair go. That's what's happening here uh, uh, on the voice debate. And I don't think Australians are going to have the wool pulled over their eyes. And Nick, you're with me, right? If 65% I mean, are making... there uh, willing to vote for something, only half of them have got any idea what it's about, bring on the vote. Let's do it next week. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I do hope we see the vote sooner rather than later so we can... Uh, hopefully see the voice supported by the Australian people. I'll uh, say let it there. start doing the good work that I know it can do. And then we can move on to other issues, which All this right. country needs to urgently address. All right, Brian, um, I want to... But, I'm... I mean, uh, look, I'm, uh, forgive me for being sceptical of Nick, Senator Canavan rubbish. here. I mean, he's using... You know, when he's just sitting there saying, oh, you know, what? politicians come in and get you if you don't understand it, don't... For... I mean, these are all Nick... the same sort of arguments that people ran against the Mabo Matt decision Canavan all those correct. years ago, suggesting people are going to lose their backyard, that Aboriginal people are going to steal your home from underneath you. He's not saying None that. None of it ever happened. 
Fear-mongering oh. was just not unbelievable. It was, shouldn't be believed. I didn't say it that. shouldn't be believed this I time. I didn't say either. that, but you know what they're going to do? You know what? I'll, I'll be more specific there, Nick, for if you like. You know what they're going to do? This group will be appointed. It's going to potentially be self-appointed by the government, not even elected, this group of The Voice. They'll be appointed from a perspective that wants to argue for more red tape, more restrictions on the development of Aboriginal land. They won't be reflective of the views of those on the ground in Aboriginal areas. So it will mean... It won't mean, it will mean quite the opposite, Nick. It'll be... Yeah, the backyards will be taken from Aboriginal people in this, in this, in this country because still... And when you go down to the tent embassy down the front of this place, the Aboriginal tent embassy is saying, stop Adani. They say that even though the local well, Indigenous people voted 270... To, sorry, 294 to 1 in favour of the mine. And that's why I'm sceptical of this voice, well, Nick. I, because the... the our I think better, Adani again, might stop again, Adani at the moment. Our yeah. Again, Matt, think you they should remind people... For us and they you should remind people that it There's will no be an advisory body only. And so... There's okay, no... Guys, I want it'll be an advisory body only. And if you put forward these things that you're suggesting, you, of course... listen to us down here. All right, guys, I want to get Bronwyn in here. And, and you would to... vote no for those things. As a parliamentarian, you would vote no for it because, of course, the voice is only going to be advisory. The actual decisions will be made by parliamentarians, Nick, people like you. we have no idea what they're going to do. Nick, we have no idea what they're going to do. Nick, we have no idea what they're going to do. Nick, we have no idea what they're going to do. Nick, we have no idea what they're going to do. Nick, we have no idea what they're going to do. Nick, we have no idea what they're going to do. Nick,